Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. From Colt Stadium in Houston, the Colt 45's game of the day is on the air. This evening's game between the Colt 45's and the Cincinnati Reds is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, makers of Pell Mell famous cigarettes. For those who are particular about taste, yes, particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell Mell. Outstanding. And by the Pearl Brewing Company, Brewers of Pearl Beer. Better because it's brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1100 Springs and Country Club Malt Liquor. Not a beer or an ale, but a totally different kind of drink. It's mighty good. Well, tonight's game here getting underway in just a few moments. The Reds and the Colt 45s will wrap up our first homestand of the year. However, our road trip coming up will be a very brief one. We'll be gone just over the weekend. Tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll be in St. Louis, and then right back here on Monday for four games against the Los Angeles Dodgers and three against the Chicago Cubs before we hit the road once again. We have a real nice night for baseball here in Houston again tonight. The temperature reading at the present time stands at 78 degrees. Humidity is 72%, and we have that strong wind again that's blowing out of the right field corner, coming across at between 15 and 20 miles an hour, blowing out toward the left side. This will wrap it up here against the Reds. The series going into tonight's game is all even up at one apiece. The starting pitcher for Freddie Hutchinson's Cincinnati Ball Club tonight will be left-hander Joe Nuxall and going for our Colt 45's right-hander Ken Johnson. Now we'll be back with the starting lineups after this word from Pell Mell, famous cigarettes. What's a cigarette for people who are particular about taste? It's Pell Mell. Listen. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell Mell. The flavors blended over, under, around, and through to bring that particular good taste to you. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell Mell. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of Pell Mell. Why? Because Pell Mell is a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. Here now is the starting lineup. For the Cincinnati Reds, leading off at second base will be Pete Rose. Rose at second base. Chico Ruiz at third. Ruiz at third base. Veda Pinson in center field. Pinson in center. Frank Robinson will be in right field. Robinson in right. Darren Johnson at first base. Johnson on first. Bob Skinner in left field. Skinner in left. John Edwards, the catcher. Edwards catching. Leo Cardenas will be at shortstop. Cardenas at short. And Joe Nuxhall, a left-hander, will be on the mound. Rose at second base, Ruiz at third, Pinson in center, Robinson right, Johnson first, Skinner left, Edwards catching, Cotton is short, and Nuxhall will be on the mound. For the Colt 45s, leading off at shortstop, Eddie Casco, Casco short. Nellie Fox at second base, Fox at second. Pete Runnels at first base, Runnels first. Johnny Weekly in right field, Weekly right. Bob Aspromati at third base, Aspromati at third. Jimmy Wynn in left field, Wynn in left. Jim Beecham in center field, Beecham in center. Jerry Grody, the catcher. There go the Colt 45s out on the field. Grody catching, and Ken Johnson, a right-hander, will be on the mound. 
Casco at short, Fox at second, Runnels at first, Weekly in right, Aspromati at third, Wynn in left, Beecham in center, Grody catching, and Johnson will be doing the pitching. Umpire in chief for tonight's ball game will be Augie Donatelli. Donatelli will work the plate. Stan Landis will be umpiring at first base. Mel Steiner will be at second. And Al Barlick will be the umpire at third. Ken Johnson now just coming out of the dugout back at third to start his warm-up throws. Series is all even, one and one. Cincinnati won the first game of the series 10 to 5. And our Colt 45s won last night's game on our first shot out of the year. A combination job by Bob Bruce and Skinny Brown, two to nothing. Now here's our national anthem. Well, Johnson is starting his warm-up throws now, and we're just about set to play ball. Tomorrow, we'll be in Cincinnati for a night game. We hope that all of you will join us for the play-by-play -play story of that one. Tomorrow night, we'll be on the air at 7.45 for the first game of the Cardinal series. We'll play again on Saturday night and then Sunday afternoon. And then the Los Angeles Dodgers will be in here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights next week. And each game will start at 7.30. The conclusion of our next homestand, which will start on Monday, will have the Chicago Cubs in on the weekend. Pete Rose, the second baseman for the Cincinnati Reds, will lead off. He'll be followed by Chico Ruiz and Beta Pinson. Here at Colt Stadium, it's 360 feet down the foul lines, 360 to left and 360 to right. 420 feet right straight down the middle, and the deepest points in right center and left center, just off each side of the scoreboard, 427 feet. We'll keep you posted on the other games tonight. One other night game in the National League. Los Angeles will be at St. Louis. San Francisco and Milwaukee are not scheduled. Well, here's Rose now. Switch hitting second baseman for Cincinnati. Hitting 171, he has two runs batted in. Facing right-hander Ken Johnson. Ken is out after his third win of the year. He comes on tonight with two wins, no defeats, and an earned run average of 2.50. Here's the windup now in the first pitch of the ball game, and Rose takes it a little bit too high for ball one. Kenny has pitched 17 and two-third innings so far this year and has allowed only 13 hits. This is his third start. He has pitched one complete game. One ball, no strikes. There's a bunt foul off the left side. Aspromati in close because uh, Rose does quite a bit of bunting and it's one and one now. Brody chases that one all the way back to the screen. In the 17 and two-third innings that Johnson has pitched, he has struck out six batters and walked five. Kenny is 1-0 against Cincinnati this year, of course. He beat them on opening day by a score of 6-3. One ball, one strike on Rose. Here's the pitch by Johnson. There's a swing and a miss, and it's 1-2. and two. Against Cincinnati the first time out, Kenny worked eight and two-third innings, allowed three runs and five hits, walked one and struck out three. Nobody out, nobody on top of the first. Here's the pitch to Rose. Just got a piece of that one. Fouls it off the right side of the plate. Count holds at one ball, two strikes. Manager Harry Kraft has Jimmy Wynn in left field tonight. His first appearance out there. Jim Beecham is in center. And Johnny Weekly is in right. Bob Aspromati at third. Eddie Casco at short. Nellie Fox at second. Pete Runnels at first. And Jerry Grody behind the plate. He got him swinging a miss. He struck him out. He fooled Rose on that. He tried to check his swing. But actually he took a very slow cut at it. And couldn't hold up on it. So Rose has struck out to open the ball game. And Kenny gets his first strikeout. His seventh of the year. And that will bring up the third baseman, Chico Ruiz. This little fella can really get out and go. He's a switch hitter also. Hitting 324, his first year in the big leagues. He has one homer, three runs batted in. The first pitch by Johnson. Bunts one down the first base side. Look at him go. Runnels lets it go foul. That's the best defense against that one. Let it go foul. Because Ru uh, Ruiz had that one beaten out. And Runnels made a play on it. By the time Pete could have picked it up, Ruiz would have been by him. So it's strike one. Ruiz played his baseball at San Diego last year in the Pacific Coast League. He stole 50 bases out there last year. One out, nobody on. One strike on Ruiz, and Veda Pinson will be up next. Johnson's lifetime record against his former teammate, Cincinnati, is three victories and seven defeats since he has been one of the tough clubs on him during his stay in the National League. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way to Ruiz now. Big swing that time. <laughs> he, just, he just about walked backwards to third after that swing. He almost lost his balance. <laughs> so he has all kinds of weapons. He bunts and he swings away. Two strikes. <laughs> Here's the windup by Ken again now on the pitch. Low and inside, and it's one ball and two strikes. Dick Sisler is coaching at first for Cincinnati tonight, and Reggie Otero is over on third base. 
One out as Rose is struck out. Here's the one and two pitch by Johnson. There's a fly ball right field. Johnny Weekly coming on the run for it now. Slows up. He's got it, and two men are out. So Ruiz flies down the right field line. Another reminder here that we have a very strong wind blowing in from the right field corner again tonight. Anything hit up in the air out that way is going to be really held up by the wind. Two outs, nobody on. Here's Veda Pinson. Pinson has hit safely in all eight of the Cincinnati games this year. He is hitting 394. One home run and five runs batted in. Veda also bats left-handed. Two outs, nobody on base, top of the first. Johnson, a big right-hander. Here's the pitch on the way now. A bouncing ball fouled on the first base side. Goes into the Cincinnati dugout. Strike one. Kenny stands 6'4", weighs 210 pounds, 30 years old. Kenny still makes his home in West Palm Beach, Florida, where, where he was born. Checks his sign again now. Two outs. Rose is struck out. Ruiz is flying to right field. Pitch is outside, up around the letters, and it's one and one to Pinson. Kenny's been pitching professionally since 1952. And in the big league since 1958 when he first joined the Kansas City Athletics. Came up through the athletic farm system. Here's the pitch. Ball is outside. Ball two and strike one on Pinson. In 1961, Cincinnati purchased his contract from Toronto. He was farmed out at that time by Kansas City. And Ken came on to help Cincinnati win the pennant that year. And made uh, one appearance in the World Series. Here's the pitch. Very high and outside. So after getting a strike on Pinson, he is behind him now three and one. Kenny came to Houston. Just before we went into the National League in 1962, purchased from the Reds for $75,000. Three and one on Pinson now. Frank Robinson will be up next if Pinson gets on. There's a swing and a long foul out of play down the left field line, so the count rolls all the way out to 3-2. In seven years in the National and American Leagues, Kenny has won 32 games and lost 50. Ball three and strike two on Beta Pinson. Outfield deep and around the right side for him. Johnson's pitch is fouled again up in the seats. Back over the Houston dugout off third. And the count remains three balls, two strikes. Two men out. Pete Rose went down swinging. And Ruiz fly to right field. Pinson making Ken work here in the first inning now with that 3-2 count. Kenny takes that long windup. Here's the pitch on the way, and Pinson started to go, changed his mind, high outside ball four. So Pinson is the first base runner tonight. That's the sixth base on balls that Johnson has given up this year. Six walks now in 18 innings. Here's Robinson, right-handed batter, hitting 273. Robinson has two runs batted in. So the Reds have Pinson on first with two men out in the first inning. Here's the stretch now and look over to first base by Johnson. Robinson takes a good strike around the knees. This Cincinnati club, should Ruiz make it at third base, could well become the runningest club in the league because they have a lot of speed. Rose is pretty fast. Ruiz, Pinson, Robinson. Ball, it's inside. Cardenas. One ball, one strike count. No score. We've just started first inning. Reds have stolen five bases so far this year. Vincent takes his lead off first. Here's the pitch on the way to Robinson. Inside at the knees. Ball two and strike one. Tomorrow night at St. Louis, uh, we will be looking at Bob Gibson again. He beat us out here a few nights ago. And Don Notabart will be on the mound for the 45. Strike on the inside corner of the knees. So it's a 2-2 count. Now, I don't think Robinson is too happy about that call by Donatelli. Two outs, Pinson has walked, and it's a 2-2 count here on Frank Robinson, a right-handed batter. Johnson has the sign again now from Jerry Grody. Outfield is deep and around the left side. The pitch is a little bit close at the knees, and it's a full 3-2. Uh, full Darren Johnson due up next, should Robinson get on. And with two outs now, Pinson will be on his way to second base on the pitch. Arms down by Johnson. Pinson breaks to second, swinging a foul up into the seats right back of the plate. So the count holds at 3-2. Art Mahaffey has been knocked out of the box at Philadelphia in the second inning tonight. And at the end of the first inning, Pittsburgh is leading the Phillies 3-0. John Boozer replaced him in the second, and Joe Gibbon is up for the Pirates. Ball three, two strikes on Robinson. Pinson back on first again now, will be making his break. 
Kenny taking a little bit long here to get his time. Now he's fed. Arms down. Finson goes to second. Robinson takes a call. Strike three. Struck him out. Robinson was on his way to first on that one. He doesn't say anything to Donatelli, but he doesn't like it. And Robinson has been called out on strikes, and Ken gets two strikeouts here in the first inning. No runs and no hits. No errors. One was left. We go now to the bottom half of the first inning. Cincinnati nothing, and the Colt 45s are coming to bat. If you're particular about taste, listen to this. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Del Mar. The flavors blended over, under, around, and through to bring that particular good taste to you. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Del Mar. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of Pell-Mell, a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell-Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. Bottom half of the first inning now. No score. And the 45 step up here for the first time tonight. We'll be looking at a left-hander again tonight. Joe Duxall. Eddie Casco will lead off. Nellie Fox and Pete Runnels will follow. The pitch by Nuxall. There's a shot to left field. Skinner coming over for it. Makes the catch on it. Well, he got a lot of wood on that one. And Skinner raced over to make the catch on it. Line shot to left. Hauled in by Skinner, one down. Here's Nelly Fox. Nelly's the club's leading hitter. He's batting 367. Also leads and runs batted in with six. Left-handed hitter, one out, nobody on. No score, bottom of the first. This is the second start for Nuxhall this year. He did not go the distance his first time out, pitching six and two-third innings. Pitch to Fox, and Nelly tried to bunt one, and Nuxhall blew it right by him. Strike one. In six and two-third innings, Nuxhall has allowed six hits. He has struck out four batters and walked four. So Joe's ERA to start things off tonight, 9.00. One strike. Left-hander set again. Here's the pitch, and Fox takes a strike at the knees, and it's 0-2, two-strike count. Casco has flied the left field. Pete Runnels will be up next, and Fox is down here to Nuxhall. Two strikes. Nuxhall has the sign again now from John Edwards. Here's the start of the windup and the pitch on the way now, and Fox takes it low and outside. One ball, two strikes. Nuxhall is a big fella. He stands 6'3". Comes in at 230 pounds, 35 years old. Born in Hamilton, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. Makes his home now in Fairfield, Ohio. Inside at the knees. Ball two and strike two. Knoxhall had his best year for Cincinnati in 1955 when he won 17 ball games. That year he lost 12. That's the most he has won in a single major league season. 2-2 two -two count now. One out, nobody on. The pitch to Fox. And Nelly lines a single right up the middle. There's a line shot right up the middle by Nellie Fox between second base and the shortstop Leo Cardenas. Pinson plays the ball back in. And there's the first hit of the ball game. That's the seventh hit off Nuxhall this year. Here's Runnels now. Feet batting left-handed is hitting 286. He has three runs batted in. One out and Nellie Fox on first. Bottom of the first inning. Nuxhall throws and Runnels takes it low. Ball one. Knoxhall started pitching for Cincinnati actually when he was still in high school back in 1944. He was bombed his first time out and then he left the Reds and went to the minor leagues and didn't come back again until 1952. There's a ball low and inside. I think Joe was something like 15 years old or something like that when he started to pitch. But he didn't get too much action at that age. Ball two, no strikes. Runnels the batter, one out. Fox at first. Johnny Weekly will be up next. Not much of a lead off this left-hander at first by Fox. Here's the pitch. Runnels takes a strike on the outside corner at the knees, and it's two and one. After Joe had been with Cincinnati for quite some time, he ran into quite a bit of trouble and became quite unpopular with the fans in Cincinnati. 
because he was not doing too well, and they traded him away to the Kansas City Athletics in 1961. Fox breaks. There's a throw down by Edwards, and Nelly's going to be out. That appeared to be starting out as a hit and run, but uh, ball was high and outside, and it's, uh, Runnels did not make any attempt to go on it. So Fox is thrown out easily by uh, Johnny Edwards at second base, so there are two men out. That's the third attempt at a steal for the Colt 45s this year, and the first man we've had to cut down out there. Ball four, high and outside. So Runnels has walked. Two outs now with the runner on first. There's the first walk off Nuxall, his fifth of the season. And now here's Johnny Weekly. Eddie Casco and Bob Aspromonti stole our first bases of the year last night. So there are two outs with Runnels on first. And here's Weekly, a 182 hitter. Bats right-handed. He has three runs batted in. There's a fast strike right around the belt. Strike one. Knoxall checks that sign again with John Edwards. Runnels edges away from the bag on first. Darren Johnson holding up against him there. There's a ball low, and it's one and one. After uh, Knoxall left Kansas City, he migrated over to the Los Angeles Angels in 1962 and then ended up on the San Diego Farm Club in the Pacific Coast League for the Reds and then was recalled, brought back up, purchased again by Cincinnati in 1962. He's been pitching real good ball ever since. Big swing and a miss by Weekly. And it's one ball, two strikes. So actually, Nuxall is in his 14th year in the big leagues. He's won 109 games and has lost 98. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Runnels at first, Weekly the batter. Left-hander stretches now. Here's the pitch on the way to Weekly. There's a bouncing ball back in the hole. Cardin is playing him just right, though, and goes to second base for the force on Runnels to retire the side. So Weekly bounces to the shortstop. And the flip over to Pete Rose retires Runnels, and that's all for Houston in the first. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One man left on base. And at the end of the first inning of play, there's no score. Cincinnati nothing and Houston nothing. Particular about taste? You bet I'm particular. And my pell-mells prove it. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of pell -Mell. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of pell why? Because Pell-Mell is a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy to bring you satisfying flavor, particularly good. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell-Mell. The flavor's blended over, under, around, and through to bring that particular good taste to you. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell-Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. First baseman Darren Johnson leads off for Cincinnati, top of the second. Right-handed batter hitting 389. Johnson's first pitch outside. Johnson started to go for that pitch and held up on it. And it's ball one. Darren Johnson has two home runs, seven runs batted in for Cincinnati. And doing a real good job on first base for them. Pitch by Johnson, ground ball to third. Aspro has it. There's the long throw to first. They got him. A very hard hit ball, and Aspro had to pick that one right out of the dirt. It didn't seem to bounce at all. Just skimmed right out there to him, and there's one down. Here's Bob Skinner, the left fielder. Skinner, a left-handed batter, is hitting 190. He has one home run and three runs batted in, and that home run came against Johnson in Cincinnati on opening day. Johnson starting his long windup now. Here's the pitch on the way to Skinner, and he taps it back to the mound trying to check his swing. There's the throw to Runnels. Got him. There was an easy out. Skinner didn't want to hit that ball. The ball hit his bat, and he bounced it right back to the hill. Two away, and here's the catcher, John Edwards. First portion of tonight's baseball broadcast is being sent your way by the American Tobacco Company, makers of Pell Bell famous cigarettes. Wherever you are, we hope that you'll enjoy our broadcast tonight. The Colt 45s and the Cincinnati Reds. No score here in the second. Two outs. Here's Edwards, a left-handed batter, and Ken's first pitch is strike on the outside corner of the belt. And Edwards did not like that call, and uh, I don't know whether he said anything to Donatelli or not, but he is very, very unhappy about it. Edwards is hitting 276. He has three runs batted in. Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. 
One strike on John Edwards. Johnson throws, swing and a miss. Now that may have been the knuckleball. Strike two. Kenny has the three-quarter overhand motion, sidearm, and then occasionally he comes almost submarine. He's out in front of Edwards, two strikes. Pitch, just missed. Low inside, one ball, two strikes. One and two count. 45's pitching earned run average coming into the game tonight as a team is 3.88 after last night's shutout. There's a high foul, no play, up into the seats, off the left side. And the count holds at one ball and two strikes on John Edwards. Houston and Cincinnati tied in the National League as we start this battle here tonight. Here's the one and two pitch now, and Edwards takes it way outside for ball two. It's 2-2. Colt 45, Cincinnati and Milwaukee all are tied for fifth place in the National League starting play tonight. Each has won four and lost four. And each is a game and a half behind the league-leading Philadelphia Phillies. Ball two, strike two. Here's the pitch on the way to Edwards. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Ken gets his third strikeout. Got Rose and Robinson in the first, now gets Edwards. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Last of the second coming up now. The 45's nothing, the Reds nothing. If you're particular about taste, taste Pell-Mell. A cigarette for people who are particular about taste. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell-Mell. The flavor's blended over, under, around, and through. To bring that particular good taste to you, so get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell Mell. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of Pell Mell, a long cigarette that's long on flavor, flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy. Particular people take particular pleasure. In the good taste of Pell Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. Aspromani. Bottom half of the second inning now, and Bob Aspromani leads off for Houston. Aspro, right handed batter, hitting 333. One home run and three runs batted in. Left hander, Joe Nuxall. Up for the Reds tonight. Here's the windup in the first pitch, and Aspro waves, and he misses. It's strike one. Going into play tonight, Philadelphia is leading the National League in percentage points over second place San Francisco, but actually the Giants are a half a game ahead of the Phillies in the games department. Aspro checked just in time. Low outside pitch. Started to go and held up. One ball, one strike. Baltimore leads the American League by percentage points over second place Minnesota. Actually, uh, Yes, just by percentage points because both Baltimore and Minnesota have lost tonight. There's a foul back into the screen. And this one ball, two strikes. Jimmy Wynn will be up next. And then Jim Beecham here in the bottom half of the second. No score. Left-hander Joe Nuxhall checks his sign again now with John Edwards. Jimmy Adair coaching at first. Lumen Harris at third base. Here's Nuxhall's one and two. And Aspro hits a foul through the coaching box down back a third. And the count holds at one ball and two strikes. Knocks all after that Rosson bag now. Has the sign again. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way to Aspromani, and it's too high. So the count moves out to two balls, two strikes. Cubs beat the Mets today, 5-1. to one. Dick Ellsworth won it, and Tracy Stollard was the losing pitcher. The only home run was hit by Ron Hunt of the Mets. Here's the pitch on the way to Aspro. Very high and outside. Full count now, 3-2. Cubs 5, Mets 1, final. Mets have won 1 and lost 5 so far this year now. So it's a full count to Aspromani. Lead-off batter here in the second. And Nuxhall set again. Here's the pitch. A fastball. Line drive. Base hit. Center field for Aspromani. So Aspro is on with the second hit tonight. And that will bring up the left fielder, Jimmy Wynn. That's the second hit off Nuxall. Fox singled in the first. Aspromati had his seven-game hitting string stopped last night by Joey Jay and Augie Donatelli. He did not get up the last time because he was ejected. So he has started a new one here tonight with a single his first time up. 
Now here's Jim Wynn. He was out of action last night. Right-handed batter hitting 261. And Knux Hall's first pitch to him is a beautiful catch by Cardenas. It'll be a double play. Oh, man. There was a great one. Jimmy Wynn is lined into a double play on just a tremendous play by Leo Cardenas. Going back in the hole, he dove for it, caught the ball on the fingertips of his glove, and had plenty of time to go to first base to Darren Johnson to double up Aspromati. Wynn was really robbed on that one. Great play by Cardenas. Here is Jim Beecham. Two outs now. Oh, those hurt. Beecham, a right-handed batter, playing in center field tonight, hitting 300 right-handed batter. Nuxhall's first pitch is a strike up around the letters. Beecham has one run batted in. Pittsburgh five, Philadelphia nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Given for Pittsburgh, Mahaffey started for the Phillies, Boozer in the second. Nuxhall set again. Here's the pitch now. Big swing and a miss by Beecham and a strike two. Pitchers have been posted at St. Louis for Los Angeles' Don Drysdale and for St. Louis' Ernie Brolio. Dodgers have lost seven in a row. Two strikes on Beecham. Nuxhall throws now, and there's a call strike three. Struck him out. So Beecham is called out on strikes. Nuxhall's first strikeout tonight is fifth of the season. And that's all for Houston here in the second. No runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody was left on at the end of two innings of play. Cincinnati nothing and Houston nothing. Particular about taste? You bet I'm particular, and my Pell-Mell's prove it. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of Pell-Mell. Why? Because Pell-Mell is a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy. No wonder so many smokers say, You bet I'm particular, and my Pell-Mell's prove it. Particular people take particular pleasure. In the good taste of Pell Mell, the flavors blended over, under, around, and through to bring that particular good taste to you. So get particular pleasure like particular people do. In the good taste of Pell Mell, be particular. Buy Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. Here's the shortstop, Leo Cardenas, to lead off in the third now. Leo gets a nice hand for that great play he made on Jim Wynn's line drive in the second inning. Cardenas is hitting 357. He has one home run and five runs batted in. Joe Nuxhall will follow, and then the top of the batting order, Pete Rose. Top of the third, nothing and nothing. Here's Johnson's first pitch now to Cardenas. A little bit too high for ball one. San Francisco and Milwaukee are not scheduled today. Over in the American League, Washington knocked off Minnesota this afternoon, 5-4. to four. Steve Ridzik won it, and Lee Stang was the losing pitcher. Ball two inside and low. Jim King had a home run for the Senators in the first with two on in that game. Final, Washington five, Minnesota four. Nobody out, nobody on base. Johnson behind here on Cotter, and it's two balls, no strikes. Ready again now. Here's the pitch. Strike up around the letters. Cotterness, it appeared, was uh, taking all the way on that one. And it's a 2-1 count. Mentioned that Boston beat Baltimore, and that was the first uh, of a Twilight Night doubleheader. Red Sox won it 3-1. Here's the 2-1 and one pitch now. Quing and a looper to right field. Fox is back for this one. Nellie's making the call, and he's got it, and there's one out. Let's pause here now for station identification. This is the Colt 45 Spaceball Network. And KPRC 95-0 in Houston. 73 degrees at three and a half minutes after eight o'clock. One away now, and here's Nuxall, left-handed batter. Nuxall has not had a hit this year. As Cardenas has opened the third inning by popping out to second base. Outfield swings around the right side for Nuxall. They're playing him to pull. There's a very high pop-up that's going to be out of play. Aspromani over, but there's no chance. It sails up into the box seats, and it's strike one. A year ago this time, we had a record of three wins and five defeats. They come in at 4-4 tonight, 500 ball. We're in a tie for fifth place tonight. A year ago, we were in ninth. Tonight, we are a game and a half behind the league leaders, and a year ago, we were three games behind. One strike to count on Nuxhall, left-handed batter. Kenny Wines again, here's the pitch. And Nuxhall swings, and he misses. <laughs> that may have been the knuckleball. Seems to just sort of hang up there for a while. Two strikes. 
So Johnson out in front of Nuxall. He's wasting no time now as he comes right back in with another one. A little bit inside at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Top of the batting order, Pete Rose will be up next. One ball and two strikes on the pitcher, Joe Nuxall. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's the fourth for Johnson now. Here's Pete Rose, who struck out his first time at bat. Two away. San Antonio is playing at Tulsa tonight, and Daryl Brandon will be on the mound for the San Antonio Bullets. Game just underway. Rose, a switch hitter, batting left-handed. Aspromati into the grass again now, protecting against the bunt. First pitch to Rose. There's a roller out in front of the plate. Fair ball. Grody's up with it. Goes down to Reynolds to retire the side. Just topped that ball. And an easy play at first for Grody. That's seven batters in a row now that Johnson's retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom half of inning number three. Cincinnati nothing and Houston nothing. Particular about taste? You bet I'm particular. And my pell-mells prove it. You hear it everywhere you go. Everywhere you find people who are particular about taste. You bet I'm particular. And my pell-mells prove it. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of pell-mell. Why? Because pell-mell is a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy to bring you satisfying flavor particularly good. So if you're particular about taste, here's the tune to remember. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. There's Jerry Grody now to lead off for Houston here in the bottom of the third. Jerry is hitting 250. He is in his second game of the year tonight. He has one run batted in and a triple. Right-handed swinger. And the wind-up by Nuxall. And the first pitch on the way to Grody. And there's a fly ball back in the left field. It's going to be foul, though. It's going to drop in there, but uh, in the bullpen. Well, Jerry did not straighten that one out. Had he, there would have been no chance for anyone to get to it. Jerry was on the air with Lowell before the game. We hope that you heard the interview. And he said he has never been a pull hitter. He pulled that one foul down the left field line. Strike one. Ken Johnson will be up next. And the top of the batting order, Eddie Casco. This is a nothing-nothing game, bottom of the third. Houston has out hit the Reds, 2 nothing. Nuxall starts his wind up. Here's the pitch into Jerry, and uh, Grody started to go for a high fastball. Checked his swing, one ball, one strike. Most of you fans know that Sandy Koufax hurt himself last night at St. Louis, which could be a very bad blow, of course, for the Dodgers, especially with Johnny Padres on the shelf also at the present time. Here's the pitch on the way. There's a roller to third base. Ruiz up with the ball. There's a throw to first, and they got him by a couple steps, and there's one down. So Grody has opened the third with a bouncing ball to third base to Ruiz, on to Darren Johnson, one down. And now here's the pitcher, Ken Johnson. Koufax, uh, according to the reports we have, has uh, elbow inflammation. And the slight muscle tear in the forearm of his pitching arm is left. And will miss a couple of turns. However, we may still see him here next week. Here's the pitch on the way now. And Johnson takes a pitch over but low for ball one. Kenny looking for his first hit of the year. Right-handed batter. One out, nobody on, no score. Third inning. Joe Nuxall and Ken Johnson, the opposing pitchers tonight. Kenny looks at a strike above the knees on the outside corner, 1-1. Claude Raymond, who has been in the hospital for the past, uh, well, almost a week now, back in uniform again tonight. Took a very light workout. It'll take it easy now for the next couple days. Here's the 1-1 pitch by Nuxall. Kenny grounds to Ruiz also, just on the edge of the grass. And the throw to Johnson on first base is in plenty of time. Ken Johnson has bounced out third to first. So the first two batters up here in the third have hopped out to Ruiz at third base. And here's the top of the batting order, Eddie Casco. Eddie hit the ball right on the nose his first time when he lined to left field to Bob Skinner. There have been two hits tonight by Nellie Fox in the first and Bob Aspromati in the second. Casco, right-handed batter. Wind blowing out of the right field corner again tonight, right to left. Casco takes a little bit of time getting into the batter's box, but now Nuxall is all set. Here's the first pitch on the way, and Eddie takes a high outside fastball, ball one. Well, tomorrow night we'll be in St. Louis for the first time this year. Meeting the Cardinals. Airtime will be 7.45 tomorrow night. 
One and zero the count here on Casco. Fastball missed at the knees. Ball two, and it's two and nothing. Two outs as both Grody and Johnson have bounced out to third. Center fielder Veda Pinson has moved way around to the left side. There's a bouncing ball to Ruiz again, right back of the bag, and the throw is in time low, dug out by Johnson, and all three assists go to the third baseman Ruiz. Three up and three down, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And at the end of three innings, no score here in Houston. The Reds nothing, and the Colt 45s nothing. Well, fans, next year you'll watch the Colt 45s play ball in the fabulous new Dome Stadium, designed with every facility to provide you with the ultimate in comfort and convenience. And now in keeping with their continued desire to assure your maximum viewing and listening pleasure, the Colt 45s present another first, the new Colt 45s official baseball scorebook. This book contains complete scoring instructions and space for 20 games, and it, too, was designed to provide you with more enjoyment and a better understanding of every game, whether you're listening at home or watching in the stands. Now, we use it every day in our broadcasts, and I'm convinced it's the finest scorebook available anywhere. Now, if you'd like a copy, simply send your name and address, printed clearly with $1 in cash, check, or money order, to Scorebook, Post Office Box 19304 Houston. $1 with your name and address to Scorebook, Post Office Box 19304 Houston. Please send no stamps or CODs. Be sure to include your name and address, along with a dollar for each book, to Scorebook, Post Office Box 19304 Houston. Now we're moving on to the fourth inning. No score in this ball game, and let's call on Lowell Pass. Well, thank you, Gene. Hi, everybody. Chico Ruiz, the lead batter for Cincinnati, as Ken Johnson prepares for the first pitch in on the grass in from third base. Bob Aspermani, this boy can put him down on the infield. The pitch, he tries a bunt, drags to the right side, and Nelly's going to handle it up with it. Underhand to Runnels, he's out of there. So Nelly Fox over to Pete Runnels. Uh, we more than had the word bunt spoken, and he was bunting it, drawing it to the right side of the infield. 4-3 on the putout, of course. And with one down, that brings up Veda Penson. Veda drew a base on balls his first time at bat. Outfield swung around a little deeper now to the right of straightaway on Veda. As Johnson prepares, the wind up the pitch, swung on, looped out over short, going back for Eddie Casco. He's got it. A little humpback liner out to... Uh, shallow left center to deep short you can call it out on the grass and Casco handle it with no trouble at all we've got Aspermani third with Casco short Fox at second and Runnels at first Jim Wynn in left field with Jim Beecham in center and Johnny Weekly in right Jerry Grody doing the catching chores and Johnson ready now Ken starts his motion delivers and it's outside for a ball Frank Robinson struck out in the first inning looking He's hitting at 2.73 to start the ball game. Right now, 2.65. Johnson ready to come down with the next one. Here it is, up tight against the hitter. Ball two and no strikes. So Robinson, who is uh, well known for his power at that plate, doing a little struggling early goings, as it happens so often to uh, many of the big leaguers or any other uh, leagues. Pitch swung on, driven out of play, foul. High to the left, and that may clear everything. And it does. It bounces up on top of the boxes. High uh, to the left of the press section and on into the parking lot. Ball two and strike one. No score in this ball game. We're in the fourth inning of play, the top half of it. And we're ready to go again. With Johnson bringing down the new ball. Swung on foul. A hot and slashed back of the coaching box at third. And it's ball two and strike two. We've managed a couple of hits so far off the softball Joe Nuxall. Had singles by Nellie Fox and Bob Aspermonte. Jim Wynn had to come in and take that rebound foul off of the wire, and it would roll back out into fair territory down the left field line. Now we're ready. Johnson ready. The big wind up, and the pitch is swung on and missed. He struck him out of there. He breezed him. And that's number five strikeouts for Ken Johnson. Nothing across for Cincinnati. There were no errors. And we move to the last half of the fourth inning. The score is Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. What's a cigarette for people who are particular about taste? It's Pell Mell. Listen. Particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell Mell. The flavors blended over, under, around, and through to bring that particular good taste to you. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell Mell. Yes, particular people prefer the good taste of Pell Mell. 
Why? Because Pell is a long cigarette that's long on flavor. Flavor that's blended in, over, under, around, and through the finest tobaccos money can buy. So get particular pleasure like particular people do in the good taste of Pell Mell. Be particular. Buy Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. From the American Tobacco Company. It's the last half of the fourth inning here at Colt Stadium in Houston, and Nellie Fox is the lead batter for the 45s. He has a single in his first time up there. Pumped it out into center field. Nellie batting at 387. South Nuxaw comes down with the pitch, and it's swung on, popped up out in the shallow left, coming in. Skinner. Bob is there. He's got it, and it's one away. Well, these uh, putouts very rapid here in the top of the fourth, and now the first pitch to Fox in the last half of the fourth. Pete Ronalds drew a base on balls in the first inning, back up with a 286 average. Ronalds has three runs batted in. Pete has eight hits now on the season, 28 times up there. There's the bump the pitch. Ball high. Joe Nuxall, as Gene told you, he started out at the age of 15, and last year had the best earned run average of any of the Cincinnati pitchers, 2.61. There's a bouncer over his head, and in the center field it goes as Ronalds comes up with a base hit. So Pete Ronalds keeps pecking away on the base hits, gives him number nine for the season. And we have a man aboard with Johnny Weekly, the batter. Johnny Weekly, who was born in New Orleans and now makes his home in Pittsburgh, California. A six-footer who weighs just over 200 pounds up there. A look to first off the stretch. Nuxall's pitch swung on foul as Weekly gave it a pretty good swing on that first round. I know many people are eagerly looking forward to uh, the next big series here beginning on Monday night. I will talk about that very shortly. Hot dog, I can hardly wait. Ready to go. A lead at first, the pitch. Swung on, hit down to the third baseman. He crops back, takes it, throws to second for one, down to first, double play. Well, Ruiz backed up and took that hot smash off Weekly's bat, threw up to Rose and on over to Johnson at first for the twin killing. Five, four, three. So no runs with one hit, none left, and there were no errors. At the end of four innings of play, it's Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. Well, another reminder that the Colt 45s have again made arrangements with Trans-Texas Airways for ticket outlet sales throughout the great Southwest. Trans-Texas, with extended time-saving schedules now serving more than 60 cities throughout the Southwest, will make it easy for you to visit Houston for Major League Baseball. Just go to your nearest TTA ticket counter, make your flight reservations, and pick up your advance game reservations at the same time. And here's another suggestion for information on special baseball rates. Write for the new Shamrock Hilton baseball brochure. You'll get all the information you'll need to make your visits more enjoyable in the luxury of the world-famous Shamrock Hilton Hotel. So write for your copy today. Write baseball director, care of the Shamrock Hilton Hotel, Houston. Yes, a great combination. Colt 45's National League Baseball the Shamrock Hilton, and the time-saving convenience of Trans-Texas Airways. All right, Ken Johnson gets his final warm-up throw down to the plate. Grody fires one down to Nellie Fox at second, so we're ready for batter up. Darren Johnson will step in to lead off for of Cincinnati, followed by Bob Skinner and then Johnny Edwards. Outfield, deep, and a shade to the left of straightaway. And Johnson looks in for the sign. Johnson uh, against Johnson. How about that, huh? Ken Johnson pitching and Darren Johnson batting. Here's the throw. Swung on, foul, up and back out of play. The batter spells that name D-E-R-O-N. Darren Johnson. He's hitting 368. I'll have you know with seven runs batted in. So he's been red hot with that hickory, hasn't he? Ken comes down with the pitch. And there's appeared to be the knuckleball a little in high inside. Ball one and strike one. Jerry Grody on the pregame program, he was our special guest, talking about Johnson's knuckleball and said it flutters and dances and plays in there all over the place. Here's the pitch. Swung on, foul back, and up and into the crowd. I don't know. I think, uh, Bob, if I were a batter, I'd get me a butterfly net and step in there and just try to catch it rather than hit it. <laughs> I'll take a swatter and try to swat it. Oh, it looks very easy to hit. It's just tantalizing. Comes up there. Looks perhaps like a basketball to some of them. One ball, two strikes. The count to Darren Johnson leading off. No score in this ball game. Top of the fifth inning. 
And Ken rocks back, sidearm, underhand. He threw the bat at it, missed it, strike three. <laughs> the bat was thrown at the ball, and it goes uh, exactly halfway between the mound and first base. <laughs> So uh, Nellie and Pete Runnels came in to feel the bat instead of the ball. Yeah, the game is very mixed up out there. The ball is supposed to go out there rather than the bat. <laughs> Strikeout number six for Ken Johnson. Well, I tell you. Here's the pitch. Outside, Bob Skinner, left-hand batter, bounced out. He tried to check a swing in the second inning and accidentally bounded out, pitched it at first. Ball one for this first pitch to him. And Johnson delivers. Outside. Ball two and no strikes. Man, alive, what pitching we're seeing out here tonight. And then, of course, uh, later on, you never know, somebody's going to score surely. And if it's the hometown team, look out for the crowd noise. Ken Johnson pumps it up, and here it comes. Pitch misses just outside. Ball three and no strikes with one out. And next up there, Johnny Edwards. 3-0 delivery is on the way, and he takes it just a little low. Ball four. Johnson has given up his second base on balls, and it'll bring to the plate John Edwards. Catcher Edwards struck out in the second inning, and he was batting at 276. Turn that around and make it 267 now. Edwards has eight hits on the season. His pitch swung on, driven high out into shallow center field, very shallow. Coming in is Beecham. He's there, and he's got it for the out. Nelly Fox, along with Eddie Casco, were out on either side of him, winging him. But Beecham right down the middle, all the way in on it, and handles it for out number two. Out of way to come in there, Jim, old boy. Leo Cardenas is the next man up. Leo popped out to Nelly Fox in the shallow right. Nelly drifting way out and hauling it in with no trouble. That was in the third. So here he is again. Tough little competitor, this Leo Cardenas. He has uh, 10 hits on the season and was batting 357 to start this ball game. The pitch swung on, and oh, did he ripple on that one? The ball the bounding out of the mitt, but Jerry, quick as a cat, pounced on it and spun around and dared Skinner to break for second. Hold one, strike one to count with two men out. I tell you one thing, uh, that Cardenas muscled up on that one, and he was swinging all over that place out there. <laughs> pitch and again he swung and missed he tried to check it that ball was a foot off at the end of the bat and Cardenas Leo looks in amazement at the umpire I don't know whether he was trying to hide or shield his <laughs> his embarrassment <laughs> or putting up a complaint to the umpire on two are you chunking in there Ken Johnson on the mound again man at first time Cardenas backs out of there said hold it let me take a quick breather here. Now he's up and ready. Oh, and two. Johnson's underhand stuff. Swung on and missed. Got him. Strike three. He freezed him. Strikeout number seven. And he mows down the Reds with no runs, no hits. There were no errors with one man left on base. Well, as we go to the last half of the fifth inning, it's Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. And now, here's a word from the Pearl Brewing Company. <laughs> The life of the party. You'll be the belle of the ball. When friends drop in, just watch them grin. When you tell them one and all, let's have a pearl beer. Pearls the beer that brings refreshment from the country of eleven hundred springs. So let's have a pearl beer. Serve up that pearl beer. Let's have a cold pearl beer. Pour a cold pearl beer. Watch the pearls of life rise in the glass. Taste it. Pearl, the beer with life, brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1100 springs. Let's have a cold pearl beer. Well, we're waiting for the leadoff batter, Bob Aspermani, to step up there. Jim Wynn and then Jim Beecham. You know, several nice calls came in from a Colt fan club up in Chicago the other night. And if they'll just drop us a line with their correct address and number of members... We're going to send along a nice souvenir pack plus Coke Auto Decals. 
I'll tell you more about that gang up there. His pitch. And Aspro takes big curve outside. Ball one. That's a high tide club up there in Chicago that we heard from on the long distance call. And I want to tell you something else about that, too. His pitch. Low, bouncing at the plate. Ball two and no strike. Yep, you just send along the number of your membership there and give us the correct address, and we'll send that nice souvenir pack plus the decals of the Colt 45 for your automobile. Here's Nuxall rocking and pumping now. The pitch, and it's ball three outside. Three and all. By the way, we'd also like to hear from uh, all the other Colt fan clubs outside of Texas and Louisiana. Just drop a line to Gene and Lowell, care of Colt 45's Houston. His pitch. Strike call. Three balls and one strike. Drop that line to Gene and Lowell, care of the Colt 45's Houston, Texas, and tell us about yourselves. We'll be glad to hear from you. Pitch on the way. Strike call. After 3-0 and behind, Nuxall hit that target right in on that strike zone. And it's a full count now. Aspermani drove a single into center his first time at bat. Here's the pitch. Swung on foul. Bouncing off Aspermani's right side up near the shoulder. As he banged one into the dirt. Ball three and strike two. Jim went on deck. Matter of fact, Bob, we just like to hear from our good fans, don't we? All around the USA. Now set and ready. Nuxall peers forward, got his sign, into action the pitch, swung on, and there's one driven into right field, not too deep. Coming in for it, Frank Robinson slows down on the run. He's got it. So one away. No score in this ball game in case you've just dialed us in. In the last half of the fifth inning with one out, here is Jim Wynn. Pointing out that Wynn really rocked that baseball. A line shot that Cardenas drove to his right, backhanding it, and turned around and doubled up Aspermani. Aspro had single in that inning. Pitch, he runs up on it but did not bunt and takes it low for ball one. Jim Wynn, a youngster who is uh, battling his way, as a mainstay in the big leagues with the Colt 45s. They play him well around in the outfield. Here's Nuxall's delivery. Swung on and missed. Ooh, did he take a cut at that one. One ball and one strike. He was battling that one all the way. One ball, one strike, one out. No score in the game. Jim Wynn hitting two five ball. There's a drive deep to left field, but it's curving foul, and that clears everything. Watch it, boys. Last time I saw it, it bounced over the wall beyond the clubhouse, and that must have been around uh, 420 or 30 feet from here. One ball and two strikes. Looks all looks in there. How about straightening that out one time, Jim? Wynn back up to the plate. Nuxall having trouble as he peers right, left, forward, punches that head forward, gets his sign. The pitch changed up high. Ball two and strike two. I imagine Nuxall was saying, uh, oh, I don't want to give that kid another one in that spot. He might straighten it out. <laughs> Boy, I tell you one thing. If he'd hit that ball in fair territory, pitch, and that's over for a strike call. Got him looking. And so a strikeout is when leaves the scene. See, that's number two recorded by the Southpaw Nuxall. Strikeouts. Jim Beecham. No score with two out. And Houston batting in the last half of the fifth inning. Well, the way it stacks up right now, this is about uh, as good a game of pitching as you'll ever want to see. Unless you happen to latch on to a double no-hitter. We've picked up three hits so far. Fox, Aspermani, and Runnels. All right. Pitch. Swung on, driven high back of the plate, and it'll clear the wire. 0 and 1. Jim Beecham has three hits. Two of them have been doubles. And I was noticing uh, a comment there by Dick Peebles in the Chronicle on the sports page uh, about the running ability. Was it? Well, it might have been Clark's. They're, they both write up some nice things about these boys. About it was Clark Nealon. That's who it was. Uh, about his great speed as he turned a single into a double the other day. The pitch. And that's high on the outside. Ball one and strike one. So, when this boy has the opportunity of slashing one through, and uh, you want to keep sharp eye on him as he makes his turn at first. Might go all the way. Pitch swung on and off the end of the bat down to the right side. To Rose, he makes the pick up. The throw to first, and look at him go, but he's out of there by about a stride. 4-3, 
as that one rolled off the right side of the infield. Second to first for the putout, and nothing to cross here for Houston, with no errors for Cincinnati. At the end of five innings applied, it's Houston nothing and Cincinnati nothing. Hey, if you were a country kid, you had a swimming hole staked out somewhere, I bet you. On an extra hot day, you'd get the chores done early, and you'd probably run all the way down to that cool water. And man, how that first cool, refreshing dive would wash the dust off. You'd come up feeling like a new man, remember? Well, if you think that's all in the past, I've got news for you. Just pour yourself a frosty glass of pearl beer, my friend. Start thinking about the country of 1100 Springs and how that pure spring water livens up every glass of pearl. Concentrate real hard. And when you can hear one of those 1100 Springs splashing, take a long drink of pearl. Mm -hmm. It's just like jumping in the swimming hole on a hot day in July. Remember now, a little shade and a cold glass of pearl, and man, you've got it made. Try a six-pack next time you head for that relaxing spot. Pearl beer. All right, here we are now, about ready for action. Well, the Cincinnati Reds coming up in the first half of the sixth inning, and Joe Nuxall, their pitcher, will lead off. And if you don't believe this game has been uh, reeled off in rapid order, we start, of course, here at 7.30 on these uh, night games, single games. And uh, we're uh, through five complete innings over half gone, and uh, an hour's time. We have Grody, Johnson, and uh, Casco when we come up in the sixth inning. They have here Nuxall, and then the lead batter, Rose, and Ruiz. So about the same pattern in the batting order. Here's the pitch. And as low inside ball one, Nuxall struck out in third, and right now Johnson has seven of those strikeouts. So, boy, he's averaging well over one per inning so far. The pitch swung on, driven high and foul off that left field line, and it'll carry back up into the seats. One ball and one strike. So Ken Johnson who came in here with 17 two-thirds innings pitched is really going to town in tonight's game. There's one dropped off the left side. Johnson makes the pickup throw to first base just in time and Nuxall almost had legged that one out for a base hit. Dropped off to the left of the plate out on the carpet and in the territory of Ken Johnson in front of Astromani making the throw to first. So a one to three put out. Well, let's see how many have hit to the outfield. Off Ken Johnson, uh, Ruiz has flied out, and uh, by Jove, that's about it. Where do I see uh, Edwards fly to center? So two to the outfield. Off Johnson so far in that knuckleball. Here's the pitch. Swung on, bouncing off the right side. Nelly Fox coming in, throws to first. He's out of there, and it's two away. So with two men down, and Chico Ruiz up there, left-hand batter. In this case, it's switch hitter. He's flied out, as we said, to right field and grounded 4-3. KPRC, Houston. Play-by-play -play being brought to you by the Pearl Brewing Company of San Antonio. Brewers of famous Pearl Beer. It's number one. Johnson, into the wind and the pitch. Outside for the ball. 1-0. Two down, no base runners. And Vader Penson waiting. He would be next. Here's Johnson's delivery, and that's at uh, Bobber and Weaver. It appeared from here, the knuckleball, two balls and no strikes. That one a little outside and high, 2-0. And, oh. and Johnson ready. Around comes the arm, pitch, swung on, foul. That carries off the left field line and back up high into the seats. Ball two and strike one. Chico Ruiz came on with a 324 batting average, and he's now... 308. He's 0 for 2 tonight's ball game. Had three runs batted in, two doubles, a triple, and a home run. Ready to work. Johnson's pitch swung on again. Foul. Clipped up into the crowd off to the left of the plate. Ball two, strike two, with two men out. I hope that you're all making plans to be on hand here at Coast Stadium to enjoy the great sport of baseball, and the National League style of baseball has got to be tops. Johnson brings down his pitch. Misses outside, ball three, strike two. Monday now, remember, we'll be back home up against the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers. And uh, these uh, scrapping 45s will be tangling with a team that has uh, blood in its eye because they've had a little tough 
start here this year. All right, here's the pitch on the way. And he struck him out. He got him looking. Strike three. His eighth strikeout of the ball game, And he mows down the Reds again. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We move to the last tap of the sixth inning. It's Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. Let's have a Pearl beer. Pearl's the beer that brings refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. So let's have a cold Pearl beer. Next time you pick up a six-pack of Pearl, try the compact glass bottles. There's no deposit, no return, and pure glass protects that Pearl beer flavor. It's a flavor you get only in Pearl beer because it's brewed with choice grains and hops and famous spring water from the country of 1100 springs. With only the best going for you, how can you miss? Like the song says, Let's have a Pearl beer, Pearl's the beer that brings refreshment from the country of 1100 springs. So let's have a cold Pearl beer. Well, Saray, back here at Cole Stadium, fans, and I can say this much. We are seeing one of the best pitching jobs ever in this old National League. Leading off is Jerry Grody, our catcher. Jerry has bounded out third to first, his only appearance up there. A little right-hand hitter. They're playing him just about a straightaway outfield defense. A shade to the right of straightaway, perhaps now. Here's the pitch down. Jerry takes it. High, ball one. This is a scrapping young fellow, this Jerry Brody from San Antonio. And he'll battle you right on down to the last flicker of hope. Here's the next pitch. And he swings and fouls off. That was a sinker at the plate. Ball one and strike one. And this Nuxall, a cagey left-hander, been around a long time, of course, and knows all the tricks. He's got a bag full of tricks in his pitches. Ready now, rocks back, one ball to one strike, and here's the pitch, and Grody takes, breaking stuff inside. Ball two and strike one. Ruiz, Cardenas, Rose, and Johnson. That's Darren Johnson at first, infield. Skinner, Penson, and Robinson outfield. Edwards catching the pitch, swung on, fouled off, bounding to the left of the plate and back, and it's two balls and two strikes. Jerry Grody, a 250 hitter at the start of the ball game, has been up just the one time. Not really fair to refer to averages uh, so frequently this early in the season, is it? All right, here's the pitch. And he went around, tried to check his swing and couldn't and struck out. So he uh, brought in about the fastest pitch we've seen him all night, this Joe Nuxall, on that one. Well, that gives him strikeout number three. Pitcher, number 40, and here's Ken Johnson. And there you hear it. As they say, let's hear it for Ken Johnson, and uh, they gave it out here. All right, Southpaw Nutsall with the rock back and the pitch, and it's a swing and miss as Johnson really gave a good riffle on that one. Strike one. What do you say, Ken? Let's go out and uh, get a run or two, boy. You can start it. Many times we've seen it start with a pitcher. Around comes the arm and the pitch. That is just outside. One ball or one strike. I hope that you have entered our Cold 45's contest. I know so many people are entering it. We're going to have loads of fun this year. The pitch, Johnson swings and pops it up. It's off to the left of the plate, back of plate. And Johnson pops out as Edwards grabs that one. Two down. So that brings up Eddie Casco, the leadoff batter. By the way, the winners of the baseball weekend in Houston on our Co-45 contest will travel in their own special air-conditioned Dreamliner bus which will be supplied by Rapid Transit Lines in Houston. Now, I say that is some kind of traveling, no? Air condition. All right, here's Eddie Casco, who is 0 for 2. Eddie has lined out to left field and then grounded third to first. It's a no-score ball game, last half of the sixth inning. In comes the pitch, and Casco takes, breaking stuff in there for strike call. And, uh... This left-hander is keeping that ball working low around that plate right now. You see, we've had three putouts against us in the outfield. Here's the pitch. And he reached and missed on that one. That pitch a little outside, breaking low. Ball really snapped down. And it's 0-2, strike two. Fox has flied out. Casco's line to left. Aspermont is flied to right. See, for the outfield putouts against Houston. 
And our outfielders have uh, made two putouts, I think I recall, or have they made any? There's one driven to left field, and Skinner goes back, fading back with it. He's back near that warning path and hauled it in. So for the second time tonight, Casco has pumped one sharply into left field, but Skinner hauled it in to retire the side. No runs, no hits, and none left on. There were no errors. So look at that quickly. At the end of six innings of play, it's Houston nothing and Cincinnati nothing. Vacation with the kids and the wife. A hunting or a fishing trip, you like that kind of thing. You like the beer from the country of 1100 Springs. Let's have Earl Beer, Earl's the beer that brings refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. So let's have a cold Earl Beer. Earl, the beer with life. Brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1100 Springs. Refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. So let's have a cold pearl beer. And now wants into action again, and here's Dean. Beta Pinson swings at the first pitch off Ken Johnson and fouls it back into the screen for a strike. Pinson has walked. He is one of two base runners for Cincinnati tonight. He walked in the first, and Bob Skinner walked in the fifth inning. So it's one strike on Pinson, a left-handed batter. Leading off the seventh inning, and no score in this ball game. Here's Kenny's next pitch now. There's a foul. Bounces away from Grody, and the count moves up to strike two. Oh, we just received a long-distance call from Dallas, Georgia. Mike Hammond, one of our regular listeners over there, once again listening to the play-by-play -play story here in Houston this evening. Good to hear from you, Mike, and all of our fans in Georgia and throughout the South and Southwest. Here's the ball, a slow one inside. One ball, two strikes. Richie Allen has hit a home run for Philadelphia, his fourth of the year, in the fourth inning with one on. But the Pittsburgh Pirates are still leading in that game, 5-2 to two at the end of five innings. Frank Robinson will be up next, and then Darren Johnson. One ball and two strikes, the count on Beta Pinson. Here's the pitch. There's a line shot to Fox. He trapped the ball, goes to first base. And there's one down. Nelly trapped that ball right off his shoe tops and then went over to Runnels, and there is one away. And that will bring up the right fielder, Frank Robinson. Right Robinson has struck out both times he's been up tonight. And Johnson has struck out eight batters in this evening's ball game while walking two. He has not given up a hit. There have been only three hits in the ball game, and the 45s have all of them. Here's the wind-up in the pitch now, and Robinson, it's a long drive. Ooh, that is a long one. Way foul off the left side, and a strike one. Ernie Fazio has just homered for Oklahoma City in the first with nobody on, but uh, Dietz had a uh, grand slam home run for Tacoma in the top half. Dick Drott is pitching for the 89ers tonight. One strike on Robinson, the pitch. There's a bouncing ball to third. Aspro right in front of the bag, goes to first, got him two steps, and there are two down. So Robinson has bounced out to Bob Aspromati. And there are two away here in the seventh inning, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Darren Johnson. Houston nothing and Cincinnati nothing. Left-hander Bill McCool is starting to loosen up now for the Reds down the right field line. Here's Johnson. He's bounced to third and struck out in his first two times up tonight. Kenny's first pitch, a swing and a miss, strike one. One strike to count. 45's pitching has held Cincinnati scoreless now for 15 innings. We shut them out last night. There's a tap foul back up against the screen. He tried to get away from a high inside pitch, and he fouled it off, strike two. Kenny has not allowed a run in 11 innings now. Six innings here tonight, and uh, the tail end of the ball game against the Braves. He jammed him on that one, and he struck him out. So Johnson has pitched seven innings of no-hit ball here tonight as he has just struck out his ninth batter, getting Johnson three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. That's eight batters in a row he's retired. We go to the last half of the seventh now. Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. In every glass of Pearl beer, the grains and hops have to be the best, ripened in the sun. 
chosen to measure up to the Pearl Beer formula, which has been perfecting now for 75 years and more. Then comes the water. And when you get down to the water, either you have it or you haven't. Pearl Beer has it, the best brewing water in this part of the world, pure spring water from the country of 1,100 springs. The Frio, Medina, Sabinal, and Nueces run swift and bright and then disappear underground into the limestone. Patiently, it filters for 100 miles to the artesian wells at the Pearl Brewery. This water brings out all the flavor of premium grains and hops. You can taste the difference perfect brewing water makes every time you have a cold pearl beer from the country of 1100 springs. Well, we're going to have to settle down here now. Get some runs. No score in this ball game. Bottom of the seventh. Here's Nellie Fox. Nell has had one hit tonight, a single, one of the three hits off Joe Nuxall. And the last time up, he flied the left field. Chico Ruiz on the grass. And Nuxall's first pitch to Fox. Fouled up in the seats down the third base side. Strike one. Kenny Johnson, through seven innings, has not given Cincinnati a single hit. And Nuxall has held Houston to only three. Single by Fox in the first, single by Aspromati in the second, and a single by Pete Ronalds in the fourth. One strike. Here's the windup, and the pitch on the way to Nelly. There's a line shot, base hit, right center field. There's a starter. Fox has just drilled his second hit into right center field. Gives him two for three. That's the fourth hit off Nuxall down. Here's Runnels. Well, Pete will probably be sacrificing here now. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Nobody out. Runnels has walked and singled in his first two times up. Try to get that runner down into scoring position. Ruiz close at third. Arms down now by Nuxall. And a throw to first. Nelly gets back. No count here on Pete, a left-handed batter. Here's the stretch again by the southpaw. There's a bunt that is a foul ball just outside. It hugged the line for about 10 feet or so. Ruiz pounced upon it in a hurry, but when he picked it up, it was foul. And it's one strike on Runnels. So Pete, who had run that one all the way out, now returns to the plate. Fox has opened the seventh with a single to right center field. There is nobody out. Cincinnati defense set up for the sacrifice. No score in this game. Nuxall has the sign again now from Edwards. And Ruiz again pulls in front of the bag in the grass at third. Darren Johnson holding up against Fox at first base. Pitch to Runnels. Pete missed that bunt attempt. And he's behind two strikes. Well, Nuxall gave him a fastball up around the letters. And Pete couldn't come up with it. And it's 0-2 count. Johnny Weekly in the on-deck circle off the left side. He'll be up next. Houston nothing. Cincinnati nothing. Last of the seventh. Nobody out. Fox on first. A lot of pitching out here tonight. Ken Johnson and Joe Nuxall. Here's his slow stretch now. Runnels down by two strikes. The pitch swing and a ground ball could be two. Right through Cardenas. Fox will go to third. It's an error on Cardenas. Break. Just a little wee little tap. But Cardenas just didn't get down on it, and it rolled between his legs to shallow left field. And Fox had no trouble rolling the third. Here's Johnny Weekly, nobody out. Fox on third, and Runnels on first. Safe on the air by the shortstop Leo Cardenas. Time is called now as uh, Ruiz comes out along with John Edwards to talk to Nuxall. So Johnny Weekly will step in here now. He was safe on a fielder's choice in the first and hit into a double play in the fourth inning. Nobody out. Nellie Fox has that red handkerchief out of his pocket over there on third that he made so famous in Chicago. Now they're going to try for the appeal play at second base. Trying to uh, get the umpire at second base. Mel Steiner to rule that Fox missed second going to third, but he does not allow it. Weekly waves that bat around. No score. The 45s are threatening. Fox on third. 
Runnels on first. John takes a strike on the inside corner at the knees. Oh, he didn't like that call by Donatelli. Fans didn't either. I think this is the first scoring threat by either ball club tonight. I'm checking over my card here. Single and an error has put Houston runners on first and third. Outfield is deep for weekly and around the left side. Infield is uh, pulled in about halfway. There's a lob over the first by Nuxall. Runnels was just a little bit off the bag. Ruiz deepens up back at third now. Here's the pitch on the way to weekly. There's a ground ball to Cardenas. Here's the play to third base. They have Fox cut in the rundown now. Ruiz tags him out. The throw to third. They're going to get a double play as Runnels is out going into third. A double play on that one. There are two outs with Weekly on first. That ball was hit sharply to the shortstop Carterness. They got Fox in the rundown on the throw to Ruiz. And then Ruiz got the ball back over to the shortstop Carterness to complete the double play and a very unusual double play. Two men are out now with Weekly on first. That's the third double play tonight for Cincinnati. And here now is Bob Aspromani. Weekly safe at first on the fielder's choice. Fox out on the rundown between home and third, and Runnels out going into third base. There's a fly ball to deep left field. Skinner all the way to the warning track. He's got it to retire the side. So that ends it. There's a threat that started fast but died in a hurry. No runs on one hit. One error. One man was left on. And at the end of seven innings of play, score Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. You know, following the ball team around, we do quite a bit of traveling. And one thing you notice, especially when you travel, every city has a different tasting water. But sometimes it even makes coffee and tea taste funny. You notice that? Well, it sure makes you appreciate good water. Well, that's one of the secrets of Pearl Beer. It's brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1100 springs. That's why there's nothing cloudy about Pearl's flavor. The water's so clear and clean that the taste of those fine grains and hops comes right on through. Pearl Beer's got flavor you miss in other beers. Pick up a six-pack of Pearl in handy glass bottles that cool more beer in less space. No deposit, no return, and pure glass protects that natural beer flavor. You're sure to enjoy Pearl. Better beer because it's brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1,100 springs. Well, we still have a nothing-nothing game now as we go into the first half of the eighth inning, and the lead batter here for Cincinnati will be Bob Skinner. He'll be followed by John Edwards and Leo Cardenas. Kenny Johnson getting a sign now from Jerry Grody. Outfield is deep and around the right side. Ken goes into his windup. Here's the pitch now, and Skinner bounces one to the right side. Runnels right back of the bag at first, makes the play unassisted. There's one down. Well, Johnson now has gone seven and a third innings tonight without giving up a hit. And here is the catcher, John Edwards. Left-hander Bill McCool is still in the bullpen. And left-hander Chet Nichols now is joining him down the right side for Cincinnati. Here's Edwards. He has struck out and flied out. He's 0 for 2. And Johnson's first pitch on the way. Ground ball. It is foul. Outside of first, strike one. Johnson has struck out nine. And there's allowed only two base runners, a walk to Pinson in the first, and a walk in the fifth inning to Skinner. Nothing, nothing. Houston has four hits off of Nuxall. One strike on John Edwards. Outfield, of course, deep and around the right side. Johnson throws, swinging a ground ball to Foxy. He's up with it. There's the throw to first, two away. So Edwards has bounced out second to first. And Johnson now has pitched seven and two-third innings of no-hit ball tonight, and that will bring up the shortstop, Leo Cardenas. That's ten batters in a row now that Kenny has retired at one stage tonight. He put down 11 in a row between the walk to Pinson and the walk to Skinner. Here is Cardenas, popped out and struck out, right-handed batter. 
Nothing, nothing, top of the eighth. Here's the pitch. Ball low and outside, ball one. The Dodgers scored two in the third, and the Cardinals came back with one after three innings. Los Angeles two, St. Louis one. We'll be in St. Louis tomorrow night to battle the Cardinals. Don Nottabard will be up against Bob Gibson in that one. Here's the pitch to Cardenas. There's a high infield pop-up. Kenny's out of this inning now. Eddie Casco is under the ball, and he's got it to retire the side. And Johnson has a no-hitter through eight innings as Cardenas has popped up to short. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We go now to the bottom of the eighth with the score Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing. Let's have a pearl beer, pearls of beer that brings refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. So let's have a cold pearl beer. Next time you lift a bottle of pearl out of the ice, look at it. Cold drops of moisture trickle down the picture on the label, part of the country of 1100 Springs. Then pop the cap, and a wisp of vapor curls up the neck. Your invitation to refreshment. It's great beer, beer with life. Try Pearl in the compact no-deposit glass bottle. These bottles go just one way, from Pearl to you, and pure glass protects the natural beer flavor. Pearl beer, brewed with famous spring water, from the country of 1100 Springs. Let's have a pearl beer, pearls of beer that brings refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. So let's have a cold pearl beer. Well, the bottom of the eighth, this is the inning we have to get a run. No score in the ball game. Jimmy Wynn, a right-handed batter, 0 for 2, lined to shortstop and struck out. Here's the wind-up by Nuxall, the pitch on the way, and Wynn takes a high fastball, ball one. Johnson has gone eight innings without giving up a hit, but the 45s have not given him a run yet. This is a nothing and nothing game. Here's the pitch to Jim. There's a tap that's foul off the left side, and it's one ball and one strike. Jim Beecham will be up next, and then the catcher, Jerry Grody. Four hits in this game. All have been singles. Off Nuxall. Win a right-handed batter, waits for the pitch now. Here's the fastball, and it's a call strike up around the letters, and it's one and two. One and two on Jimmy Wynn. Singles in the first, second, fourth, and seventh innings. Off Nuxall. One ball, two strikes. Here's the next pitch to win. There's a drive into center field. Pinson coming on for it. Can't get it. Base hit. Win will go for two. Here's the throw, and he made it. Beautiful job of base running by Jimmy Wynn. I'll tell you one thing about that double. Pinson played it kind of smart out there and appeared that he might possibly make the catch, but then he kind of loafed a little bit after he was picking up the ball and Wynn took advantage of it and goes in sliding with a double. And that's the second double of the year for Wynn, and here's Bob Aspromati. That's hit number five off Nuxhall. So the lead man is on second. Darren Johnson on the infield grass at first. Ruiz now is having a few words with pitcher Joe Nuxhall. Wynn got a lot of mileage out of that hit, not hit too deep to center field. Actually, Pinson was shaded over at the left side. He had a long run for it. Now, before Astro comes up, let's pause for station identification. This is the Colt 45 Spaceball Network. 72 degrees at one minute after 9 o'clock. This is KPRC 95-0 in Houston. Here's Jim Beecham now. I said Bob Aspromati. Aspro ended the seventh with a fly to left. Jim Beecham, a right-handed batter. Here's the stretch by Nuxall in the pitch. Bunt foul, and Ruiz giving it a try. Won't reach it, though. Strike one. Beecham now trying to bunt here, trying to get down a bunt to get Wynn over to third. Strike one. Beecham struck out in the second, grounded out in the fifth to second base. No score. Last of the eighth. A no-hitter for Johnson through eight innings. And the 45s desperately trying to get him a run here in the eighth. Win on second, and Cardenas is holding him just as close as possible. He has opened the gap between short and third. That hole on the left side of the infield is gaping. 
Now Carter is trying to fill it in by moving. Ooh, strike call. Fastball on the inside corner of the letters. 0 and 2 count on Beecham. Jerry Grody will be up next. A double by Jimmy Wynn to center field to open the eighth. There is nobody out. But Beecham is down to Nuxall now with a two strike count. <laughs> Nuxall gets a sign again from Johnny Edwards. Cardenas again moving in behind Wynn at second base to hold him as close as possible out there. There's a fastball inside. Ball one strike two now. One and two count on Beecham. Wins double the first extra base hit for Houston tonight. Jim weighs that bat around now and knocks all his back up in the rubber again. Not much of a lead by Win off second base. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss struck him out. Got him on a high curveball around the letter. So Beecham has struck out for the second time tonight. One away. That's the fourth strikeout for Nuxall. And now here's Jerry Grody. Grody is 0 for 2. Bounced to third. Struck out. All we need is that base hit. They're pretty hard to come by tonight. Good pitching job by both Johnson and Nuxhall. Here's Grody. He bats right-handed. One away now with Wynn on second base. Wynn still tied at second because uh, Cotterness won't let him loose over there. There's a pop-up in the infield. Foul off the right side, and Johnson has a play on it. He's there, and he's got it two down. So Wynn, after opening with a double, Nuxhall has struck out Beecham and has fouled out Grody to first base. And now here's the pitcher, Ken Johnson. Well, it's up to Ken now if anything is going to happen here in the eighth. He has grounded a third and fouled out to the catcher. 0 for 2. Two outs. Win at second. No score. Cardenas has moved back to his normal spot at shortstop now. With two away here and Johnson at bat. Here's the stretch by Nuxall, the pitch, and Kenny hits a fly ball to left field. Skinner all the way back to the track, and he's got it. And it retires the side. So Johnson has flied to deep left to Skinner on the first pitch. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. And we go now to the ninth inning with a score Houston nothing and Cincinnati nothing. Say, how would you like to win an exciting expense paid baseball weekend for two in Houston? You'll fly on TTA's new radar smooth Converse with this extended time saving schedule throughout the great Southwest. Remember TTA, that's the ticket to where you want to go. You'll enjoy the relaxing atmosphere at the world-famous Shamrock Hilton Hotel with its comfortable rooms, an Olympic swimming pool, and attend special parties. Simply complete the last line of the following jingle. Follow the Colts. They're on the go. The fighting team that's out to show they've got what it takes to win the game. Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Now that's all. Just fill in the last line. All local station winners will compete for an expense paid trip for two to the New York World's Fair on American Airlines, America's leading airlines, route of the Astro Jets. Now here's how you enter. Well, the scoreless tie now as we start the ninth inning. The pitcher, Joe Nuxall, will lead off here for Cincinnati. Then the top of the batting order, Pete Rose and Chico Ruiz. Kenny a little bit late getting out to start his warm-up throws after flying out to end the bottom half of the eighth inning. Leading off for the Reds is the pitcher number 41, Joe Nuxall. Nuxall has been up twice tonight. He bats left-handed. He has struck out and bounced back to the mound. Outfield swings around the right side. They play Nuxall to pull. Johnson looks in to get his sign now from Jerry Grody. Here's the windup and the first pitch on the way to Nuxhall. It's inside above the knees. Ball one. One and nothing. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out, nobody on base. Infield is also shifted around the right side. Here's the pitch. Fast strike called on the outside corner of the letters. And it's one ball and one strike. We'll be at St. Louis tomorrow night. Broadcast time will be 7.45 tomorrow evening. Don Nottabart against Bob Gibson from St. Louis. 
Here's the one and one pitch now on the way to Nuxall. Ground ball to the shortstop. Or Aspromati cuts in front of it, goes to first base, one down. So Johnson retires the first man in the ninth inning. There's eight and a third innings in which the Reds have not picked up a hit tonight. And now here's Pete Rose, the top of the batting order. Aspromati moved way around in front of Casco to make that play one away. This is the second time tonight that Ken has retired 11 in a row. That makes it 12 right here, however. Here's the first pitch into Rose. There's a bunt out in front of the plate. Johnson's up with it. will have to hurry, and he can't get it. The ball goes down the right field line, and Rose is on his way to second. Fox makes the pickup, and it's going to be scored as an error on the throw. The throw was right by Runnels. He had no chance to get it. And the Reds have a man on second with one out here in the ninth inning. There's a good bunt by Rose out in front of the plate. So Kenny's throw is bad to first base on that two base error. And that will bring up Chico Ruiz now. So Johnson is in trouble here with a man on second and one out. Ruiz has been up three times without a hit. He's flied out, grounded out, and struck out. Nelly Fox out talking to Ken now, giving him a little breather out there before he gets set to pitch to Ruiz. Still no score in that Boston-Baltimore second game at the end of four. The Red Sox won the first game three to one. Ruiz, switch batter, batting left-handed. No score, but the Reds have Rose on second here in the ninth. With only one out. Kenny checks a sign. Aspromati in close now on the grass at third for Ruiz. Very fast. Here's the stretch and a look back at Rose. Takes a big lead off second base and the pitch to Ruiz is high and outside for ball one. Left-hander Hal Woodeschick begins to loosen up now for Houston down the left field line. One and zero oh count. Johnson in trouble in the ninth inning. Here's the stretch by Ken. The pitch. There's a ground ball off Johnson's leg. Aspromati goes to first base. They got him for the second out. Ken has been hit on the leg by a hard shot back up the middle by Ruiz. Here comes Harry Kraft and uh, trainer Doc Ewell out to have a look at him. Kenny says he's all right, though. And on the play, Rose moves to third. Well, give Kenny an assist on that one. The relay throw by Aspromati to Runnels for the second out. With two away, here's Beta Pinson now with Rose on third. Pinson has been up three times. He's been on base once he walked. Has popped out and grounded out. Rose on, on an error on the throw by Johnson trying to get him at first. And two away. Here's the wind up in the first pitch into Pinson. Ground ball right side. Foxy's got it. Dropped it. Throw to first. It's not in time. The run scored. And Cincinnati leads one to nothing on an error by Fox. Marty Keogh now is going to run for Pinson at first base. So Pinson is safe on the error by Fox. And the run scores. And it's one to nothing Cincinnati. And here is Frank Robinson. Keo now running at first for Pinson. Robinson 0 for 3. is struck out twice and grounded out. Here's the pitch now. There's a high pop foul off the left side. That's going to be up into the seats out of play. Aspromati cannot get to it. An error by Johnson and an error by Fox has moved rows around the base paths here to give Cincinnati a 1 to nothing lead without benefit of a base hit. One strike on Robinson. Right-handed batter, Keo on first. Kenny takes a stretch again now, keeps an eye on first base, low outside pitch, and it's one ball and one strike, 1-1 one, one count. 45's in the bottom of the ninth. We'll send up the top of the batting order, Casco, Fox, and Runnels. One ball, one strike count. 
Keogh edges away from Runnels at first base. Here's the pitch on the way. There's a fly ball back into deep left field. Went all the way to the wall for this one, and he got it to retire the side. Robinson gave it a ride, but Wynn was there. Well, Johnson has pitched a no-hitter through nine innings, and he's losing the ball game, one to nothing. In the ninth, one run scored, no hits, two errors, one man was left on. And we go now to the bottom half of the ninth inning with the score Cincinnati one and Houston nothing. And the 45s now will have to come up with a run to keep this ball game going. Here's another reminder that the main ticket office will be open this weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 5. So come on out to get your tickets for the upcoming series with the Los Angeles Dodgers starting on Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. And the Cubs will be in next weekend. Top of the batting order, Eddie Casco will be up to lead off the inning. Well, here's Casco now. Come on, Eddie. Let's get a couple runs here. Been up three times without a hit. Flied the left twice and bounced to third. Joe Nuxall on the mound now. He's pitched a good game tonight. He's given up only five hits. Here's the windup and the first pitch to Casco. Low and inside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Jimmy Adair is uh, having a few words with the first base umpire. Uh, Stan Landis down on first base about something here. Adair having words at first with Landis. Jimmy has followed him right over behind first base. Jimmy is leaving the field here. And now Harry Kraft is coming out. Kraft is coming out to see what's going on. Now uh, Adair is going back out to first base along with Kraft. Now the two of them are talking to the first base umpire Stan Landis. Pinson of course out of the ball game now as Keo took over as a runner for him so Keo goes into center field to replace Pinson. One to nothing, Cincinnati, bottom of the ninth. Nobody out, nobody on base. Kraft and Adair still uh, arguing over on first base. I don't know whether Jimmy has been kicked out or what. One ball, no strike count on Eddie Casco. Now Adair is leaving the infield. And Kraft is walking right along with him. One to nothing, Cincinnati out in front. Kraft is signaling for Cod Deal to come out of the uh, dugout. Now Deal is coming out to take over the coaching duties at first base. And Adair evidently has been kicked out by Stan Landis. I think this is the first time that Jimmy has been ejected since he's been with the ball club. So Deal takes over at first. Jimmy becomes the fifth Houston coach manager and player to be ejected this year. Five ejections and nine ball games. One ball, no strike count on Casco now. Joe Nuxall gets his sign again now from John Edwards. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way to Casco. There's a strike on the outside corner at the knees, and it's one and one. One ball and no strikes.
Here's the windup now. The pitch on the way to Eddie, and Eddie hits a ground foul by third down the left field line. 45s need a run to keep this ball game alive. Ken Johnson has pitched a no hitter through nine innings, but two errors in the top half of this inning has given Cincinnati a run. Knocks all winds again. Here's the pitch to Casco. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Casco goes down on strikes. One away. That's the fifth strikeout for Nuxall. And now here's Nellie Fox. Fox, a left-handed batter. Nellie's had two hits tonight, singles, and flied the left field the other time. Nuxall has the sign again from Edwards. One out, bottom half of the ninth inning. Here's the first pitch to Fox, high and inside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Cincinnati one, Houston nothing. Here's the windup in the next pitch, and Fox grounds to the shortstop, Cardenas. He's up with it. There's the throw to first base. In time, Fox is out two away. So with two down, that will bring up Pete Runnels now here in the ninth inning. Well, Pete has had one hit tonight and two official times at bat and has walked once. There have been quite a few pitchers who have lost no hitters in extra innings, but never anyone who has lost one in nine innings. And Johnson is just one out away from doing that right here tonight. There's a ball. It's high. One ball and no strikes on Runnels. One to nothing, Cincinnati. Pete hits a foul back into the screen. One ball and one strike to count. Knoxall goes after that rosin bag. Knoxall starts the windup again. Now here's the pitch on the way, and there's a foul back up in the seats off the left side. One ball and two strikes. Cincinnati leads it one to nothing. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs, nobody on. One ball, two strikes on Runnels. Here's the wind up and the pitch on the way now, and it's high and inside, and it's two balls, two strikes. The last pitcher to lose a no-hitter was in 1934, Bobo Newsom. Pitched nine innings of no-hit ball, but lost it in the tenth. Here's the 2-2 pitch now to Runnels. Ball three, it's too high, and it's 3-2. And back in 1917, there was the double no-hitter through nine innings from the game involving Cincinnati and Chicago. Big pitch now. Ball three and strike two on Runnels. And Pete rolls one to the right side. Johnson makes the pick up. Nuxhall covers. The ball game is over, and Cincinnati wins one to nothing. Now Deal is putting up a big squawk with the first base umpire. He's called him safe, I guess, now. He has... Now Hutchinson is out arguing with Landis, and Bob Lillis is going to run. That'll be an error on Darren Johnson. Now Hutchinson is squawking to Stan Landis at first base. All the Cincinnati players were just getting off the field, and now they have to go back out. This game is not over yet, and Bob Lillis is going to run for Runnels. Well, there's the second Cincinnati error of the ball game. Dying run on first with two outs. And here's Johnny Weekly. Hutchinson is still uh, talking with Stan Landis over on first base, and the Cincinnati players now are moving back out to their positions. This is a real weird one tonight. The Reds lead it one to nothing in the bottom of the ninth with two outs and Lillis at first. Ken Johnson has pitched a no-hitter through nine innings. But the 45s trail on two ninth inning errors. We mentioned before, never in the history of baseball has a pitcher lost a nine inning no hitter. Pitchers who have lost no hitters in extra innings were Earl Moore of Cleveland in 1901, Leon Ames. 
of New York in the National League in 1909, Tom Hughes of New York in the American League in 1910, Jim Scott of the White Sox in 1914, Jim Vaughn of the Cubs in 1917, and Fobo Newsom of the Browns in 1934. Cincinnati has not had a no hitter pitched against them since Lon Warnicke of the Cardinals beat them on a no hitter in 1941 on a quick check here. Well Landis is halfway down the line talking to the plate umpire Augie Donatelli and now the third base umpire Al Barlick and the second base umpire Mel Steiner are getting together at that one spot out there with Lillis on first and two outs. Evidently Hutchinson is going to protest the game. I assume that's what it is. There's the signal from Donatelli. So Hutchinson is protesting the game from this point on the call at first base. Here's Johnny Weekly. Come on Johnny give that ball a ride. Two outs and Lillis on first. Weekly is 0 for 3 tonight. Here's the stretch by Nuxall. The pitch in and John takes a fastball inside of the belt ball one. Weekly hit into a double play in the fourth safe on a fielder's choice in the first and also in the seventh inning. Two outs last of the ninth. Reds lead one to nothing. Here's the stretch by Nuxall. Weekly fouls it back up into the seats and it's one ball and one strike. Nuxall goes after that rosin bag now. 45s must have Lillis around. Last chance. It's up to Weekly now to keep it going. Cincinnati leads one to nothing. Nuxall back up on that rubber again now. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way to Weekly. Fastball high and it's two balls and one strike. Two one count. Skinner deep in left and Marty Keough deep in left center field. Ball two and strike one on Johnny Weekly. Here's the stretch again by Nuxall. Watches Lillis at first and Weekly takes ball three. It's high and outside. Three and one. Well, should Weekly get on? Bob Aspromati would be up next. And to be some more activity for the Reds now down the right field line. Here's the stretch. Ball three, strike one. Throw to first. Lillis gets back in time. Weekly back in there again now. Here's the stretch. Nuxall throws to John, swing and a miss, and it's a full count of 3 2. Well, we're right down there now. Two outs and a full count to Weekly with Lillis on first. Bob will be breaking on this pitch. Nuxall checks the sign, goes after the Rosen bag. Reds lead at one to nothing, bottom of the ninth inning. He's ready again now. Watch Lillis on first. The stretch by Nuxall. Throw to first. Lillis just a step off. Gets back on in plenty of time. Here's the stretch again by the Cincinnati left-hander. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Weekly. Fouled it off. Just got a piece of that one. Shot it back into the screen. Lillis breaking on it. And the count holds at three balls, two strikes. Well, no matter how this game comes out tonight, it's going to be long remembered. This one will go into the record books. Here's the stretch now. Lillis takes a lead off first base. Here's that three and two pitch to Weekly. Call strike three. The ball game is over, and Cincinnati wins it by a score of one to nothing as Johnson pitched a no hitter and lost the ball game by a run. So Weekly ends it by striking out. In the ninth inning, no runs, no hits. One error, one man left on base, and the final score, Cincinnati 1 and Houston nothing. Now, we'll be back with the final totals after this word from Pearl. Refreshment from the country of 1100 Springs. 1100 Springs. Rushing cold and clear, give pure refreshment to cold world. 
famous spring water from the country of 1100 springs brings out all the flavor of the premium grains and hops used in pearl beer flavor you miss in other beers try it and see have a cold pearl beer let's have a pearl beer Now here are the totals for this evening's ball game with the Cincinnati Reds winning it by the score of one to nothing. For Cincinnati, one run on no hits, two errors with three men left on. And for Houston, no runs on five hits and two errors with four men left on base. The winning pitcher is Joe Nuxhall. He has won one and lost one now. The losing pitcher, Ken Johnson. His record is two victories and one defeat. And the time of the ball game was one hour and 56 minutes. Well, that wraps it up out here tonight with Cincinnati winning it by the score of one to nothing. Tonight's game has been brought to you by the Pearl Brewing Company, Brewers of Pearl Beer. Better because it's brewed with famous spring water from the country of 1100 Springs. And Country Club Malt Liquor. Not a beer or an ale, but a totally different kind of drink. It's mighty good. And by the American Tobacco Company, makers of Pell Mell famous cigarettes. For those who are particular about taste. Yes, particular people take particular pleasure in the good taste of Pell Mell. Outstanding. Now this is Gene Elston along with Lowell Pass with a reminder to stay tuned for a recap of the game, late scores, and an interview from the players' dugout all on the Colt 45's wrap-up show coming your way in just one minute. This is the Colt 45's Baseball Network.